hi there and welcome to this special edition of in the labs with me becky now in this video i'm going to show you how i created this slot together candle assembly so we've got three cut out candles that slot into the base the parts made of plywood and i've just finished it with some copper lighting so when working with slot together projects there are a few things that we need to consider so let's have a look at how i made it and those considerations in the software Okay, so I'm using VCarve, however, this video can be opened in both Aspire and the Cook2D products. Um, so we're going to open an existing file from your project folder, you'll have a file called Slot Together Candles. So here I'm just going to talk you through how I created uh, this file. So to start with our job dimensions that we're working with 25 by 25 and the material thickness that I'm using is 0.47 inches okay now this is important for me to remember for when we get to the slotted areas of this project which I'll talk about shortly okay so I started off by just drawing out uh, a large candle so this vector here uh, using the polyline tool over there uh, and then I created a smaller candle, uh, again using the polyline tool to do this. Uh, and then what I did was I basically used the mirror tool to create a mirrored copy uh, of the smaller candle. So that we've got two that are identical and the idea is that the large one will sit in between the two. Then I just used the uh, draw ellipse tool to draw the basic base shape uh, for the actual stand of our candle ornament. And so with all of the key parts, uh, I then moved on uh, to actually position the candles in a layout uh, that I wanted to create as if I was looking at uh, the candle arrangement front on. So if I just undraw the visibility of the original parts layer, I'm just going to switch on the layout layer and you can see here I've put the large candle in the middle and we've got a smaller candle either side and that's kind of really how I wanted to lay the parts out. Uh, so then what I needed to do was I needed to draw out the slots uh, for the candles to actually slot into our base shape uh, where basically I just used the rectangle tool to match the width of each of these candles where the height of uh, the rectangle would be the same as the depth of the material that we are using. So if we just undraw this layer and if we go to layout with slots you can see those vectors there and if I click on any one of these uh, and we take a look down here we can see that the height is 0.47 which matches that depth of the material thickness that we are using. So if you're wanting to cut this out then you just need to alter the height of these slots to match the depth of the material that you're going to use. And so with that layout complete, what I then did was I basically arranged them uh, to fit my sheet. Okay, so you can see I've got the two smaller ones, the larger one. I have the base uh, with the slots and you'll also notice that I have these dog bone fillets. And so what I did was I used this tool over here, the fillet tool where I added in dog bone fillets, uh, where the fillet actually matches the radius of the tool that I plan to use. That way the tool can uh, cut out uh, into those corners so that our candles can uh, successfully slot into uh, those slots. Okay, so with all of the vectors ready, everything's arranged on my material, uh, it's time to look at the toolpaths. So let's just go ahead and switch over to the toolpaths tab. Okay, so we've got three toolpaths here. So the first one is the pocket for the slot. So that's the uh, vectors here that we've filleted in order for our candles to slot into so they can stand upright into the base. So I'm cutting down 0.3 of an inch uh, using a quarter inch end mill here, doing that in an offset strategy, whereby I'm applying a negative allowance of 0 0.005. Uh, and that's just going to overcut this vector by 
this amount uh, just to ensure that my candles can fit in place it's not too tight neither is it too loose where has this number come from well I've worked on lots of sock together projects in the past and this seems to be the magic number for projects that I've worked on uh, however I would recommend that you create a test area first uh, to test out different allowances to see what fits best for you Okay, so that's the magic number for me, so I'm happy to just go ahead and cut this as it is. Uh, give that a name, pocket slots, go ahead and press calculate, and we can preview that, and those are our slots. Next up, we've got the pocket flame. Double click on that. So here I'm basically just cutting all the way through the material. I don't want to tab this area. Uh, that's why I'm creating this pocket pass where we're just cutting all the way through. Uh, so again, we're using that same tool to clear that out. And then I've got a profile toolpath here to cut everything out. So cutting all the way through the material using a quarter inch end mill on the outside. Adding tabs to this toolpath so you can see those, toolpath, uh, those tabs there. So if you want to edit those just go into the edit tabs option. And I've also applied uh, ramps and a lead in and a lead out to this toolpath just so we have a nice clean cut so that tool's not plunging directly onto the side surface of our candles or the base. So let's go ahead and calculate that. Okay, so if we take a look at our preview, we can see uh, the lead in and the ramp there and the lead out uh, around there. Um, and then we could just go ahead and preview that to see how that looks okay so that's pretty much it so at this stage we'll go ahead and we'll go and save our toolpath and then it's time to go and run those on the CNC so to start with we're going to look at screwing the material into the spoil board uh, this is my hold down method uh, and then we're just going to go ahead and set up the machine Okay, so now that we've got the material off, we've finished cutting, uh, I'm just going to use a saw just to detab uh, all of those tabs just to break everything free. Okay. 
Now all the parts are detabbed, it's time to hide all evidence that there was ever a tab there. So I'm going to use the sanding machine uh, to sand away at those tabs. Uh, once all of those tabs have been sanded off, I'm going to do a light sand uh, across the entire outline where I can on all of the different parts just to give it a nice smooth finish. And I'm just going to hand sand the top surface along with the bottom surface of each one of the parts and again purely just so that we have a nice uh, smooth surface. Now that everything is nice and smooth uh, it's time to assemble everything. And to finish, I used copper lighting. Now I got these lights from Amazon. I'm sure that you are able to find these sorts of lights from any other retail store. Uh, and the nice thing about these lights is because they are made of copper, uh, they're actually quite moldable. And so I can wrap these around the candles and they kind of just stay in place, which is perfect. Okay, so here we have our finished candle assembly. And the really nice thing about this project is it's super quick to cut and really easy to finish. And so if you fancy having a go at creating this project, then simply head over to your Bean Co account where you can download the project files from there. And if you do end up creating your own version of this project, then please share that with us on the Vetric Forum or on one of our social media channels. We love to see what you're making. And if you like this video, then give us a thumbs up. And if you've not yet subscribed to our channel, then please hit the subscribe button for instant updates on the latest videos that we'll be releasing. So thank you for watching and happy making.